Hey, how are ya? Have you heard about ChatGPT? You have? Have you seen ChatGPT does this? Hi ChatGPT, I would like to go to the grocery store two blocks down the road to pick up some food before the end of the week. Based on the weather and my calendar, can you suggest the best time to do so please? Based on the weather forecast and your calendar, I suggest you go to the grocery store tomorrow. The weather will be sunny, which is perfect for a walk. You have two available time slots tomorrow. 1. From 4.30 p.m. for 60 minutes 2. From 11.15 a.m. for 75 minutes you can choose the time slot that suits you best. Enjoy your trip to the grocery store. So that was the power of ChatGPT's latest feature, function calling. This feature has been out for about a couple of weeks now. It does some pretty funky things. And today I'm going to take you through the process of setting up a very quick proof of concept all using c -sharp to show you how all of this can be done behind the scene. But before we dive in, let's clarify what is function calling. Now, according to ChatGPT blog post, this feature allows the developer to describe functions to the ChatGPT models and have the model intelligently choose to output a JSON object containing arguments to call those functions. This is a new way of more reliably connecting ChatGPT's capability with external tools and APIs. Now, think of this as a way of telling ChatGPT what tools are available for it to use. And when the model decides to use the tool, it will also provide all the inputs required by this function, by this tool. By using this feature, developers can create chatbots that answer questions by calling external tools, which is really what I have shown you just now. Convert natural language into API calls or database queries, and extract the structured data from text. And this is crazy. Imagine now you can turn customer emails and documentations into structured data stored in a format that's much easier to be reported on and the downstream workflow can deal with these documentations much easier using the structured data. If you're a QA engineer, you can generate all the test cases, and on top of that, you can generate a structured testing data set based on the function you're testing and the input that function requires. And if you're thinking really wild, you can even get ChatGPT to control your smart home devices. I mean, after all, most of the time, Amazon Alexa doesn't really like my accent anyways. So, are you ready? Let's dive in. Okay, let's kick off the process. I have an empty folder already opened in Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to create a um, new .NET console application by running the .NET new console command. After that, I'm going to install the necessary libraries, that is the JSON.NET library, allowing me to deal with JSON payload within this application. After running the command, we can verify the uh, JSON library has been included with our application. The next step is to quickly set up some console application structure. So now I have a namespace, a program, and a main entry point. And let's very quickly test this application. And then we can see hello world has been printed on the screen. That means our console application is running. Now let's set up some global variables. So there are four variables we are creating. Being the first one being the API key. The second one is the chat GPT endpoint. And the last one is the J array, which is really the conversation we are having with ChatGPT. To make ChatGPT become conversation aware, this object should hold the entire conversation history. Let's quickly fix the reference by including JSON.link in our project. And let's make sure we are assigning the API key at the beginning of our program. Let's quickly create a couple of helper functions. The first one are the versions of ChatGPT API we can use when making the call. The second helper function including the roles available to us when making the API call. The details of each role is available on ChatGPT API, so I'm not going into too much details as part of the video today. Next, let's create another helper class to actually call the ChatGPT API for us. This helper class takes a few arguments. The first one is the model, which is the version of the ChatGPT API we are calling, and that's defined up there as part of the first helper class. The second one is the messages, which is really the conversation we are having and the questions we are asking ChatGPT. The third one is the functions, and this is the highlight of our video. This is where we tell ChatGPT about our functions it can use. So again, let's very quickly fix the reference issues by including the necessary libraries in our code. So we basically serialize the object to a JSON payload and send it over to ChatGPT. And then we'll wait for the response to come back and we return the response to the calling party. Okay, now we are done with this code for now. Let's quickly collapse them to make it a little bit easier to read. Okay, next, I'm going to create a wrapper for our worker class. And this function only takes in one argument being the question we are trying to ask ChatGPT. It will then complete the uh, request message by inserting the version and the user roles around the question itself and send out the completed request message to our worker process. 
So now we should have everything we need to make our first API call. Let's give it a try. My first question would be, what is my name? And I'm going to pass this question to my wrapper class. OK, let's compile the code and give it a try. Now we can see the payload is in such format. And now we have a response from ChatGPT. It is a valid response, even though ChatGPT could not help us. But now we know we have the ability of talking to ChatGPT via our API. So now let's put our code in a loop so that we can keep asking questions without having to restart the application every time. And our exit point is when the user enters either an empty value or the word quit. Right, let's give it a try. So I'm starting by telling what my name is to ChatGPT, and it has acknowledged my name. But if I try to ask my name again right after, it doesn't look like my name has been remembered. Let's fix it. To make ChatGPT become conversation aware, we need to make sure with every API call, we include the entire conversation history with the messages object. And we can do that by keep appending new message to the existing messages object. So now with our code like this, we are passing in our entire conversation history every time we call the ChatGPT API. Let's give it a try by asking the same set of question again. Hi, my name is Leon, and yes, it has acknowledged my name. Let's try asking about my name right after. And it says, your name is Leon. Okay, now we can have a proper conversation with the ChatGPT. Let's carry on. So now I'm going to create a new local function to provide me some weather information. To keep it simple, we have defined four kinds of weathers, being sunny, rainy, thunderstorm, and cloudy. We also have another dummy function called getWeatherForecast. It will return a weather forecast for the next x number of days, and the weather for each day will be one of those four values defined previously. Let's give it a try very quickly. Let's run the program, and like so, it has returned the weather forecast for the next three days, being rainy, sunny, and rainy. Let's remove this testing code and carry on. So now we have our local functions defined. How do we tell ChatGPT about it so it can start using it? Let's have a look. We are creating a new function called getFunctionDefinitions. This function returns an array of objects, and each object follows a specific structure having the name of the function and also the description. So the description is very important. This is actually there for ChatGPT to, to read and understand what is the functionality of this function. We also need to define the required arguments for our function, in this case being the number of days, and the type, a short description, as well as if the argument is optional or required. And next, we need to plug in this information to the request we are sending over to ChatGPT. And in our wrapper class, we can see we have the version, we have the message, and the third argument being now at the moment is actually the function definitions. So let's replace the now value with our function definition. Let's give it a try and see what happens this time. So my question to ChatGPT this time would be, what is the weather like for the next two days? And we can see in the request the payload we are sending over to ChatGPT not only have our questions in it, but it also including the function definitions as we have defined in our code. Now looking at the response we have received back from ChatGPT, the finish reason says function call. This means ChatGPT wants us to call a function, and the function to call is get weather forecast, and the argument to pass in is two days. So ChatGPT has successfully extracted structured information from an unstructured natural language question. Now it's up to us to take that information, call our local function, and then pass the response back to ChatGPT. So let's do that. So when we see a function call response from ChatGPT, we should not be stopping our conversation there. Instead, we should be taking that information and use that to make a call to our local function, 
and pass the result back to ChatGPT so it can prepare a meaningful response back to the user. So over here on the screen, I'm creating a loop in my wrapper function and keeping the conversation going as long as we see the function call being the finished reason from ChatGPT. So what do we have on the screen at the moment is a new block of code I just pasted into the editor. First of all, I'm adding the latest ChatGPT response back to the messages object, which is our conversation history. The next thing is we're checking the actual finished reason being function call. If the finished reason is indeed function call, we are going to extract the argument and the function name from the returning payload. Then we are going to check the exact function name so we know which function locally we need to call using the parameter uh, ChatGPT return back to us. After that, we will append the function result back into the conversation history, and we are going to go back onto the top of the loop and call ChatGPT again with all the latest information. And hopefully, ChatGPT will then be able to provide the answer back to the user. So now with that loop completed, let's give it a try. My first question would be, what is the weather like for the next two days? And right away, we can see we're calling GPT twice. And ChatGPT is now able to provide me that weather forecast information being sunny on 26th of June and raining on 27th of June. The finished reason is stop, which means we don't need to make any further function calls for this particular request. So now we have given ChatGPT one function to check the weather forecast. Let's further expand our uh, um, program a little bit by providing one additional function to ChatGPT to check the available time slot of my calendar. So again, this is just a dummy function. It will take a date as the input variable, um, but it's not actually using that date. Instead, it will just randomly generate a few time slots as available times in my calendar and return that as the result. Let's give it a try. Okay, let's run it a few times. As we can see, every time we're getting a slightly different result back. Okay, let's delete our testing code. The next thing is to tell ChatGPT about this new function just like the get weather forecast function. We do that by adding one additional node to the function definitions function we developed before. The second node follows the same structure apart from the actual information about the function is different. Let's collapse the code. And the last thing we need to do is to handle this new function call in the returning payload. So over here, right underneath the previous get weather forecast condition, we have a new condition block. If the function name is check calendar, we know we need to call the check calendar function and pass the result back to the conversation and then call ChatGPT again. I think we are almost there, so let's give it a quick try. So my question would be, how does my calendar look like for tomorrow? Okay, ChatGPT actually returned three time slots from my calendar back to me. Looks good so far. Let's clean up the information we see on the screen a little bit so it's easier to read. So we are going to parse the result JSON and uh, we are only interested in the actual content of the message. Like so. And that's also common out of this line because we don't really need to see the payload we are sending over to ChatGPT anymore. Okay, now with that, let's try to run the program again. Let's ask about the weather for the next five days. Yep, that looks good. Now let's check my calendar for the next three days. Okay, not bad, not bad. Now let's ask something a little more complex. I would like to go out for a run for at least 30 minutes, sometimes in the next three days. I do not want to get wet though, so based on the weather and my calendar, can you please suggest the best time for me to do so? Okay, result is back. Let's have a look what we have. First of all, let's look at the weather. So the weather on 27th and 28th are thunderstorm and rainy. So let's have a look what ChatGPT said. ChatGPT said on 27th, thunderstorm, so maybe another day. Same for 28th, it's raining, so maybe another day. Now coming back to 26th, 
that's the only sunny day, so it is giving me two time slots on that day. It actually ignored the 15 minutes slot because I told it I want to go for a run for at least 30 minutes. So in the result, it included the 75 minutes slot and the 30 minutes slot. But what's better is it is actually suggesting me to go for a run in the morning to avoid running during the hotter part of the day. Now tell me that is not cool. So what do you think? Now there are different libraries out there we can use with our project to make this process a lot easier. But today I wanted to show you how to do everything manually so that process actually took a little bit longer. I also want to mention what we have done today is just a very quick proof of concept. In production, your code should be much more robust with the ability to handle different scenarios and exceptions. But nonetheless, I hope it was informative and most importantly, I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, happy coding, happy chatting, and bye for now.